How's it going everyone? Sephir here and we are back with another video on Tower of Fantasy. Today we're going to be talking about elemental weapons. There are four types of elemental weapons in the game. Physical, ice, lightning, and fire. So we're going to discuss each of these, talk about their effects and their benefits and kind of how to maximize them. And in order to do that we're going to head over to the website and check out a few characters and see their abilities and elements up close for ourselves. So let's go ahead and check that out now. All right, and here we are on the official website. And just as a little side note and bonus, they have reached the 2.5 million pre-registration mark. So all the rewards are unlocked and there is now a new hidden bonus tier of 3 million. So if we get those obtained, we will see even more goodies coming to the launch of the game, which will be fantastic. But now let's dive into the characters so that we can see the elemental types and go ahead and discuss them. So first up, we'll go ahead and talk about ice weapons since we have Meryl here on the field already. So ice weapons do have an elemental weakness or reduction in some missions and dungeons. This rotates weekly, so it will say like, hey, ice elements are 50% weaker in this encounter, or they're 50% stronger, whatever it may be. It could do that for all of the weapons, so just keep that in mind. That may be a weight in your decision on whether you want to use a certain elemental weapon or not. And finally, we'll talk about ice's ability itself. So when the ice weapon becomes fully charged, like when you have it equipped and it hits the max charge mark to trigger an ultimate ability, then you will cause a freeze with your next attack. It's gonna freeze them solid for two seconds, and then the enemy is gonna have a frost bite effect on them after they break out of that freeze, which is gonna kind of slow their uh, speed, so to say, the target's like acquisition speed for uh, charging up their abilities. And then it will also deal 151% attack damage. And that is for the SSR rank weapons, so the super rare ones like Meryl. The lower rank weapons will have a slight reduction in that value, uh, so just make sure to uh, take note of that. So it's a pretty good ability. It has a very strong effect uh, in terms of PvP, but can also hinder enemies' ability to generate special moves. So this is uh, definitely quite an interesting one. Next, we'll go ahead and jump into a physical style character. So Shiro is a physical elemental uh, character. So the physical effect, when the weapon is fully charged, the next attack will cause the enemy to enter a critically wounded state, which is going to put a debuff on them for seven seconds. They're gonna take 20% increased damage, and that's, that attack source will deal 137% bonus damage so that's going to be the physical thing it's going to sort of soften up the target and allow it to take more damage from other sources so this is very nice to have uh within your damage roster or within a, some sort of group play you probably want at least one physical uh weapon to proc this ability next we'll go ahead and jump into fire zero does have the fire attribute fire has a very strong and powerful effect when the fire weapon becomes fully charged, your next attack will ignite an enemy for eight seconds. And during that time, they're gonna take 58% of your attack damage every second for that total eight seconds. And along with that, it's going to reduce the target's healing effect or output by 50%. So this is quite strong. It ends up at being somewhere around like 400 plus per, or 500 plus percent damage or something like that. It's, it's really, really, really up there. Uh, so this is probably one of the stronger effects in the game. And I think that's usually true in games like this. Fire is always really strong, right? That just <laughs> tends to be something that happens. All right, and then we'll go ahead and skip forward to a lightning character. So we'll scroll down here and find out. Uh, we'll go with Crow. That seems okay. So Crow is a lightning style character. Lightning has the ability to, when it's fully charged, the next attack will uh, paralyze the opponent for one second and then leave an electric effect on them so it's kind of like a periodic tick or stun of damage uh, very similar to other games from what we've seen it will also remove all buffs from the target and prevent them from gaining any other buffs for six seconds in addition to dealing 144 percent of the attack damage of the weapon. So this is a very powerful tool to strip monsters and especially bosses of their buffs 
that they could be applying to themselves, but also very strong in PvP as well, because ripping off buffs will include things like heal over time effects and all kinds of good stuff like that, uh, so it does have a very, very strong use. So that's going to be a breakdown of all four of the elemental abilities. There may be more added in the future, but for now, that is what we have. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about stacking one particular element. There are some abilities that do increase sources from a specific style. Uh, so there are like things that increase ice damage only or lightning damage only. That may come into play later on down the line, especially when we get characters like Nemesis and other uh, ones from the later version uh, but for now I think this is a solid place to just understand what all of these effects do and I will make a side mention for effects in the environment there are some things that you will need to use like you'll need to use a lightning weapon to break open a lightning stone that you may find out in the wild fire generally tends to unlock a lot of hidden or um, nodes within the world. There's like these flowers that you can destroy. You have to have fire to destroy them and then they give you a black nucleus. And then there's the same thing for ice uh, as well has a trigger for like ice stone. So there's going to be something for uh, every element to hit or interact with in the open world that's going to give you some kind of material or reward. Uh, so just make sure you're matching up those elements accordingly and you should be able to solve any puzzle like that. All right, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, and hit the bell if you found this information useful. And stay tuned for more Tower of Fantasy content. We will catch you in the next video.